fiber is known for its health benefits, but are you actually eating or adding them to your diet? Andrea, as always, is here to shed the light <laughs> on fiber this morning. It's all about fiber. I, I've actually gotten this question of being in the store uh, where, you know, people really question, you know, what are fiber rich foods? A lot of people just assume that it's just gonna come from whole wheat breads and, and brown rice and mm -hmm. so on, but it really extends to a lot of different products that we could actually be getting mm -hmm. on a regular basis because we are definitely not getting enough fiber in our diets. Yes, we're not. No. No, we're not. Not yes, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not, yes. right? So, and, and fiber, it, it, it's true. It's as you say, it's definitely renowned for its health benefits. And those health benefits go from, you know, keeping us regular every day to um, lowering our cholesterol, managing our type 2 diabetes. Um, it can also help counteract some irritable bowel syndrome mm -hmm. um, symptoms in people. And there's definitely a lot of link bet um, between fiber and uh, reducing colon cancer risk and even breast cancer risk. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, interesting. so getting enough fiber on a diet is very, very key. So I've got some examples here of how to do that. All right, so we'll start this way. Quinoa yeah. Yeah. and brown rice, brown sugar. Um, brown wheat, I mean wheat. Um, yeah, bulgur wheat, actually. Wow. Yeah. Lisa, get it together. Right, okay. Okay. right. So, so obviously a lot of people are already doing the brown rice, mm -hmm. but interestingly, bulgur wheat and quinoa are actually a lot higher in fiber per cup compared to brown rice. Really? Yeah, yeah. So uh, a quinoa would give you about eight grams of fiber per cup, over eight grams. This would give you um, more like uh, five grams, and this is just about uh, four grams or so. Okay. Right? Yeah. So you actually are getting more by, by you know, experimenting with some of these other whole grains. And quinoa is a gluten-free grain for those out there that can't tolerate um, wheat. Um, gluten-free is also uh, in brown as well. How do you well. actually make this? This is what actually is prepared, it, it's it's just cracked wheat. It's, it's made from wheat, and it's literally, you, you cook it the way you would white rice. You mm -hmm. boil it mm -hmm. for about 15, 20 minutes and you could you could use it this is what they use actually to make tabbouleh salads like okay. the Mediterranean um, salads oh yeah um, yeah and a lot of people uh, honestly just use it as a rice plaf on the side um, ah. the way they would rice oh yeah Oh, and that's healthy. It is healthy, very it's healthy. Very good yeah, food. yeah. Lentils, lentils, and even dried um, canned beans, even right. Delicious. So you you can certainly fortify recipes that you're already using. So adding lentils to maybe your tomato sauce if you're a vegetarian out there, you can boost the fiber as well as boost a bit of the protein. Um, using you know black beans or chickpeas over your oh, salad. Oh, so yummy. Yeah, really, really great. And you know maybe once a week um, do you know black bean fajitas or mm. bean burritos you know mm. at, at the house. So just bulking up your fiber mm -hmm. this way. It's a lot of protein as well. It, it is, mm. absolutely, absolutely. Flax. Flax and chia seeds actually. So um, for those for those people out there that don't know what chia seeds are, they're, they're from the chia plant. Uh -huh. And they actually have the omega-3s the way flax do. Okay. Only, you know, contrary to our flax seed, we, we have to have them ground so that our, our bodies absorb the omega-3s. But a chia seed whole, you can certainly use it the way you would flax. So in pancake batters, you're baking in a smoothie, in yogurt very very versatile so mm. this is a way to increase omega-3s as well as your fiber is there a difference in texture and taste is there is the, these kind of resemble little mini poppy seeds oh, okay whereas this is more of like a grainy kind of consistency okay yeah okay. yeah I love raspberries right yeah and so. and in this case any kind of berry and w w the, the idea I'm going behind this is sweeten things with fruit so for example mm. if you eat a yogurt maybe go for a plain yogurt and sweeten it with some fresh fruit mm -hmm. or maybe instead of adding sugar to your oatmeal maybe sweeten it with some fresh fruit and it tastes delicious it, too. it really does it really does and it adds a different texture as well absolutely absolutely and of course maybe swapping you know a, a low fiber cereal bar for maybe some fresh fruit again mm -hmm. right so really finding ways to to fit it into the diet. Mm -hmm. Cereal is one thing that I, yeah. we, we always have a bit of a problem with because you have mm -hmm. one with no fiber, some with a little fiber, but yeah. this one has a lot of fiber. Yeah, so a lot of your 100% brand cereals, this is one in particular that you could use on yogurt. You can actually use a little bit to blend it up into a smoothie as well mm -hmm. here. Um, but you get, like you can actually see, you get almost half your over half your day's worth yeah. just by having a half cup serving. So maybe swapping the cereals around a little bit mm -hmm. see how we could uh, how we could use these things and add them to your protein shake guys yeah absolutely protein absolutely shake. Sweet potato. Sweet potato, broccoli. broccoli. So really fortifying the diet with more vegetables. And in this case, your sweet potatoes and your bro broccolis and even leafy greens, these really win hands down when it comes to fiber. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take much, just get them into the diet. And of course, after you have your nice 
all fiber mm -hmm. meal. Mm -hmm. Agua. Agua. Water. So I wanted to make, make people aware that remember that if you are increasing your fiber intake, at the same time you should also be drinking more water because the way that fiber works effectively through the body is by getting it out. So you really do need to hydrate. Flush yourself yes. with some water. Yep after you have your fiber. Yep, All right. exactly it. And any last words and tips for those out there that are watching right now that need to add that fiber to their meal? I think, I think the most important thing is, do, uh, if you're gonna increase your fiber, do it gradually. Don't go from everything white to everything brown. Maybe start with one food at a time okay. and really build it in because again, you, you want your digestive tract to really get used to this extra bulk. And okay. again, hence the reason why you need the water. When you say over time, what does that mean? Is it could it be like over, over you know, um, a couple weeks over a month even for those people that really aren't eating mm -hmm. on a lot of fiber. You know, start with maybe an extra fruit a day for the next week or okay. so. You know, maybe start swapping the white to the brown rice okay. or the quinoa and, and see how those go over, you know, one to two weeks. Okay, yeah. well I'll definitely do that because I always just go straight into it. Yeah, Head so first. gradually is the key here. All right, thank okay. you very much. Great. All right, don't forget you can tune in every Thursday to get tips from Andrea on the Live Healthy segment. And of course, it's sponsored by Kirk Supermarket. Any questions, you can come on down here. They have all the answers for you. Don't go away, more Daybreak coming up. Stay with us. Live Healthy is brought to you by Kirk Supermarket and Pharmacy.